bit nervous, kind of last race of the year. Like nervous, excited, a mix of feeling good, ready to go, bricking it, you know, the usual stuff. But yeah, no, I'm good. As soon as the start line goes and we get out of the city, I'll be super happy. But for the minute, I'm just like, I'm not sure I want to be here, you know? So yeah. worked uh, very hard on the race course uh, in Taiwan to actually show the highlights of the island and try to break the idea or the Western society idea that Taiwan is just a big factory. Taiwan has, uh, if I recall, 267 mountains above 3,000 meters. So it, this is just a constant mountain. This is just unbelievable. And that's the beauty of uh, exploration racing. We can find people that are willing to race hard and explore on very long distance. Uh, a territory like no one has ever done before. A lot of the time you're alone, you're tired, you're exhausted, you, you just, your senses are working overload and you know you have highs and lows and yes, I, it, and unless you experience it, if it's actually difficult to explain it and it, it'll be difficult for a lot of people to to understand understand that. When you're out there riding these long hours, you can only think of your your demons, the things that come that throws it out. It's like a near-death experience that I've had. It's like I'm going to die doing this. But then at the same time, when your life flashes in front of your eyes, that's basically what I had. Hours and hours of that, of thinking about my life and where I need to change it, where I, I can be stronger. Um, so yes, it was life-changing. All the races I did this year, I learned a lot about, about myself, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of experience. Ultra cycling is a matter of experience. I think it's going to be very challenging for people. I think that on paper, this one looks, you know, very doable in one or two big stints, but I actually think it's going to take longer. I think this is going to be a real surprise in the Biking Man series, this race. You know, you can put a percentage how much a percentage is physical and, and mental, but I'm a big believer that this is a mental game. I mean, you don't you don't need to look at the, uh, the the variety of athletes. You know, some people you'd look at and think they don't ride a bike. Other people you look at and see natural born rider. But it's what goes on in your head that determines whether you can be successful at this or not. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey just to get here. Um, not just the last few days, the last few weeks, but almost all year really, ever since I heard about Biking Man Oman. It's been a really interesting uh, process and a lot of learning, self-discovery, finding out a lot about myself and what the limits are. And I feel that this is now the culmination of a year's hard work, dedication, effort to put into practice everything I've learned and to try and piece that all together and put together what for me would be a perfect race. Irregardless of what other people are doing and where they are on the course, it's about what I can do, what, my, what are my limits, where I can take myself and what I've learned from this year and see where that gets me. Outside, outdoors, the nature, the country, but also myself, you know, because it's a new distance at the end of the day. It's like the double elevation of uh, Oman and the double distance almost of Corsica. So it's still new and it's still more challenging. And also it's a new country, jungle. I've never been cycling in jungle. So yeah, of course I cannot get bored about that. <laughs> I can do this forever. <laughs> I think it's to, to go and explore, to go to to places I wouldn't normally go to, and that's what I love about the series. You know, I, I did a man, and I'd probably never have gone to a man if it wasn't for the opportunity to go and race a bike somewhere different, and similarly Taiwan. Yeah, just uh, opportunity to go somewhere new, off the beaten track, and just to explore. That's that's the beauty of it, the unknown. You know, it's it's you, it's you're responsible for yourself, and and actually, when you, I find when you. When you're on your bike on your own, you're vulnerable, 
and yet you know the kindness of strangers and people helping you out pointing you in the right direction it's it's just wonderful What makes me do this? Um, it's a good question really, and I, uh, one that I've thought about a lot. It does give me a sense of purpose. It gives me uh, direction, uh, a focus outside of everyday life. But life would be boring, wouldn't it, if we didn't do these things? You know, the world is this incredible place, and if we just sit at home and read books and watch TV and isolate ourselves into a small corner of the world, we miss out on such an amazing experience in life and we get one chance to live life and I think you've got to make the most of it and for me this is a way of making the most of it. I think every time you see something that's different you change yourself and you don't know how you're going to change until maybe weeks, months afterwards but everything you see, everything you do impacts on your future and who you become and how you see the world. And for me it's just a different way to see the world and opening my eyes to what's around me. Like when I'm on the bike, I don't feel the need to stop. This is where I would like to be, this is where I want to be. And just I just want to keep riding. Biking man is like if you wanna win, you just that's just full on racing. It's just you can't stop, you can't sleep, you, you have to like every every minute counts. You, when every resupply, when you resupply somewhere, you, you gotta you know look at your watch and say, okay, I have five, maybe 10 minutes to resupply because there's, you know, guys chasing me or I'm chasing someone and I, I don't know when he's gonna stop. So it's, it's, I feel it's very different, it's probably more stressful. I feel you, you have to be kind of a lonely guy, you know, to, to be that passionate about cycling, you know, to be, you know, you have to be really comfortable with, with yourself, with being alone all the time. And I remember the first time I went for a, a really long trip, I was kind of anxious of being alone. I was trying to, you know, find a friend to, to be with me. And then I, I left because I couldn't find anyone. And I found out that, you know, it was just great to be alone. And now, I, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like to travel with somebody else because I'm so used to being alone and doing whatever stupid stuff I want to do. And it's sometimes really, really stupid but I'm, I'm, I'm just fine with it. There's not, nobody to stop me, you know? I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, keep riding for 500 Ks and, and not sleep and, and just, I don't know, just, I feel like it. Eat, ride, sleep, repeat. It's, it's everything is so focused on, on being efficient on the bike, being uh, yeah one with the bike, and then sleeping on the side of the road. It's it's, it's cool. It's adventurous. Uh, I went to the Inca Divide last year in uh, Peru. I, I really like uh, Peru and Ecuador as a country. Um, so that was cool. Um, but I think um, these races are. Well, for me they are, like uh, 10 or 20% fun and 80% just... Oh, <laughs> it's a kind of masochism, I think. But yeah, racing, auto races is just going slow, keeping your... Uh, uh, saving your energy because it's so long and steady and... Uh, I like to go hard. Wow, uh, last night or yesterday, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. Just found a new limit to what's possible. And I don't think it was the pushing myself yesterday that gave me that sense that there was a, there was a, something was possible. It was the going to bed, having two hours sleep, getting back up, getting on the bike and cycling 200 kilometers. When in my head, when I was getting to checkpoint two, I was quitting the race because I was like, I was in a really dark place. It was almost like I was on the bike and I was above it looking at myself, like an out-of-body experience. It was really bizarre, the, the lack of sleep. I think I did two, 
31 hours awake, 520 kilometers, 7,000 meters of climbing. You know, the mind starts doing weird things to you when you, when you put it to that test. But I've learned that I can compete at this level and in this sport. And up until this race, whether I finish third, fourth, fifth, sixth now, it's proved to me with a bit more knowledge, a bit more training, that anything really is possible with this. It's crazy. We just keep like passing each other. It's, it's relentless. Relentless. And it's going to keep going like this until the end, until somebody blows up, I guess. I think the thing that really scared me was as I was cycling, I was convinced that I'd done some permanent sort of damage to my brain. I was like, how are you going to recover from this? Because you've actually done something last night that's like irreversible. That's like the level I was at. And then I was thinking in my head, well, how do you tell people you've quit this race because you've completely messed your mind up? Nothing to do with the physical aspect, but you've warped your mind by not going to bed. <laughs> so, yeah, it was interesting. I think it was just the intensity of, of the location, the environment, the weather conditions, the animals, the, the track, it just all combined and yeah, it was incredibly tough. I think coming on the back of the previous night where a lot of us just got really wet riding up that climb in the rainstorm and, and the climb was a lot harder than it looked on paper. You know, we, I think we looked at it and thought, ah, oh, it's fairly straightforward, you know, not too steep, not gradual gradient, and it was just steep ramp, flat, steep ramp. Um, so everyone was tired, and then to go into, yeah, that jungle section, I've never before delayed my start by an hour just so I could have more light to see the snakes by. In fact, in Taiwan in general, you just don't have a clue what's coming next. And that's, that's what makes it such an intense experience. And I think that's, that contributes to just, I think everyone's feeling a little bit fried at the moment. Front to back, everyone's a little bit fried. So, and I, and I think that's it. It's, it's probably way outside of everybody's comfort zones. It's not so much knowing what to do, but it's then doing it. That's the really difficult bit. It's when you're tired, when you're cold, when you're emotional, when you just want to get off your bike and sleep. That's when you forget to eat and you need to find ways around that, mental tricks, processes, whatever, then forces you to eat. I did many races this year. Uh, well, since last September, I did a uh, short race in Tuscany, then all biking and Oman, then biking and Corsica, and the last one was transcontinental race. I learned a lot about myself, about my setup, about uh, how to manage with uh, fatigue and everything. Then I don't have a, a really clear objective for this race, but I would like to be well placed. I got heat, heat exhaustion. I don't know. I, I guess uh, it, was, it was just too humid. My sweat couldn't. I just I just couldn't handle the heat, and uh, I started getting nauseous. Uh, couldn't drink, couldn't eat. So, like, basically, if you're cycling without eating and drinking, tropical heat is bad. You're gonna get very weak. So, I got very weak. And then I got acid reflux and, like, everything that seemed to. to yeah, everything just seemed to go wrong. And uh, so, I just, uh, I just couldn't climb because I, 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 I had cramps like crazy. You know, as soon as I was climbing, I was cramping up, and uh, I decided to I decided to just rest a little bit. I, I didn't know it was possible. Like I stopped for 13 hours. I was like, I woke up. I was dizzy. I I almost passed out during the night when I got up to pee, and I don't know. I was I was really weak, real dizzy, and uh, couldn't. Like I could eat just you know small amounts of food, and and I don't know what happened. Like I, I just ate small amounts of food. I was like, okay, maybe I, I can I can make it to CP2 and see what ha what happens there. And I don't know. Got got more food. Got 
more drinks and the heat was not as bad definitely and I don't know my legs came back it's just like that just, just out of nowhere I, I had no idea it was possible and my legs came back and I've been going since then Oh, it was amazing just from uh, start to finish. Like every every kind of move, you're learning new things. You know, whether it's the the jungle or going through the night, you know, 27 hours without, without stopping, uh, sleeping in park benches. Then the next night, having a nice hotel. You know, it's just a fantastic experience. Just determination. You know, um, like train hard, get the right people to help you. Um, and then you just got to give it everything. And any challenge that you see on, on route, just don't let it get, you know, just prevent you, just keep going, basically. The Biking Man series changed me. It gave me the confidence to know that I can go, you know, two days without sleeping, to know that I can push up these bigger hills, to know that there's actually a lot more in the reserve tank than I thought. And not only that, it really opened my mind to some amazing cultures and all these amazing people and all these people that I never really kind of thought existed of like, let's take the Inca Divide being out in the middle of nowhere and you know there's people with nothing that would give you everything you know it's just it's absolutely crazy and it's just a life-changing experience you know you talk about self-discovery and opening your mind that's what biking man will do if you can ride a bike then you know these will really open the world up to you and i think for me i've really evolved as a person just because i've experienced so much and as an athlete i can just dig so much deeper now the Biking Man series completely changed me, not only as a rider, but as a person, really. They gave me the confidence to know I can push a little bit further. They put me in all these diff different situations where I had to suffer, I had to struggle, and I'm a better person, a better rider because of it. Now, this isn't the final exploration. This is the start of something bigger and better. And I think not only is it the start for me to be bigger and better, but it's the start for Biking Man to push, you know, what they're doing and really get more people into these races and change people's attitudes on going to these absolutely stunning, beautiful places and riding badass bikes, because that's what it's about. You know, it's a journey of self-discovery. It's not a race. A lot of the endurance stuff's in your head and if you're right in your head and you've got that sort of determination to actually run the course even though it's painful and your body's you know you're not going to push the power and your heart's slowing down i mean yesterday my heart going up that second to last climb was like 123 max you know uh, normally i'm up to 165 it just slows down and uh, you just keep going basically and i think yeah no it's 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 in your head a lot of it I mean, I'm hoping to keep going for quite a few years and ultimately, you know, I'll, I'll be on an e-bike somewhere. <laughs> Maybe, you know, all being well as long as you can keep it upright. No, but seriously. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there are, you know, if, if you put the miles in and you do the training, I mean, I do a lot of thought in terms of, you know, getting the training right, um, doing the right stuff, trying to get, you know, weight right, feed right, you know, and, and the rest of it. And, uh, and you know the balance of high intensity work and long distance and you know you get to feeling good and you can do a bit more and more and okay over the years it'll get a bit slower uh, maybe you won't do so much distance maybe you'll just just do it for the fun rather than well, anyway it is fun that's what you're doing it for really it is something you can get into when at any age I mean I started at 63 I mean I've always had a bike but I've never ridden more than 10 or 15 miles a day in my life before before this and this year I've, I've done about nearly 15,000 kilometres, you know, so it's, uh, 
you, it, it can happen. <laughs> I just love getting on a bike and getting out there. And it just, you know, even sometimes when the weather's bad, you're thinking, oh, shall I go today? But within 10 minutes of getting on a bike, it's just, it's a big release. It's, you know, I'm lucky I don't have a lot of stress in life, but I think, you know, if, if you did, it's, it's, it's great for that as well. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, I just love the sport. And, uh, and, and doing something like this, you know, is just, just brilliant.